This topic is about fifth generation mobile technology. We will study spectrum allocation and all other 5G related concepts. In August 2022, 5G telecom spectrums were auctioned. It generated over 1.5 lakh crore rupees to the government. So what is a spectrum? It is a particular part of electromagnetic spectrum used for a specific communication purpose. When you talk on phone with your friend, let's say your communication is at 1.8 GHz frequency. If an aeroplane passing over your head also communicates at 1.8 GHz with air traffic controller, both of your signals can interfere and pilot may hear your voice in the cockpit. So, we divide these frequency ranges. For example, all mobile communication may take place at 3 to 6 GHz frequency. Aeroplanes may communicate in 20 to 30 GHz frequency. The process of dividing these ranges and allocating happens through auction by Government of India as spectrum ranges are a sovereign asset of a nation. 4G was using 1.8 GHz to 2.4 GHz frequency band, but 5G uses a different set of frequency bands. It's a mix of different ranges. There are low band, mid band and high band category. Low band uses lesser than 1 GHz frequency. This is good for connection over a large area with comparatively lesser speed. To connect few villages, this is useful. Mid band uses 1 GHz to 6 GHz frequency band. This has a very good speed and a reliable distance coverage. You can expect up to 3 to 4 km range. This is a good band. It works both indoors and outdoors. The high band uses a slightly higher frequency range from 24 GHz to 52 GHz as of now. Theoretically, it can be extended up to 100 GHz, but currently we have not reached it till there. With this high frequency, wavelengths are as low as few millimeters. As a result, this frequency band is called millimeter wave frequency band. It has a very very high speed, but it has a very limited coverage area. Also, these signals can be easily blocked by walls, trees or even heavy rain. So, this is not great for indoors. It is ideal in busy streets, stadiums, malls, etc. You should keep in mind, higher the frequency, higher the speed of internet. But you cannot use ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays. They have very very high frequency and they can ionize a living cell and kill it. We use only radio waves, microwaves and even infrared for communication purposes. These are low energy, non-ionizing radiations. If you see, our 5G technology largely uses microwaves. But generally we call it radio waves even though technically they are microwaves. Let us compare the speed and capacity of 5G. 5G has a bandwidth of 1 gigabits per second. 4G had only 200 Mbps. So, 5G has 5 times more. Also, latency of 5G is less than 10 milliseconds. What is latency? When you type a message and hit send in WhatsApp, at first it shows clock symbol. And then, message delivery double tick does not come immediately even though you both are online. This is because of higher latency. The time it takes for data to reach from one node to another. In 5G, these all happen very fast due to lower latency. Average speed in 4G was only 25 Mbps. 5G has 200 to 400 Mbps. Let us see some of the technologies 5G has. First one is Massive Multi-User MIMO that is Multi-Input and Multi-Output Enabled Network. This means 5G supports a vast number of devices connected to internet with huge data transfer, both uplink and downlink. 5G has a connection density of 10 lakh users in just one square kilometer. 4G could connect only 1 lakh devices. 5G can thus support Internet of Things, where almost all devices such as TV, fridge, washing machine, cars, etc. connected to the internet. Second, 5G depends on small cell stations. As 5G uses higher frequency, signals fade away over distances. So, many small towers are added so that there is a good signal everywhere. Thirdly, it makes mobile edge computing possible. Let us see an example. You have a CCTV to identify criminals. In current technology, 
CCTV captures video and sends entire footage to a centralized server where processing and analyzing happens. In mobile edge computing, the edge devices, that is, end devices. In this case, CCTV itself processes and analyzes this data. Fourthly, 5G has beam forming technology. In a town, at one side, 100 work from home engineers are working. They need higher speed. 5G tower has capability to increase directional beam capacity, thereby increasing transmission and reception for this direction only. Because of higher bandwidth of more than 1 Gbps, 5G can have enhanced input and output connections. They are together called throughput. Let us see some related developments. Cellular Operators Association of India formed 5G India Forum. We have National Digital Communication Policy 2018 that has objectives regarding 5G services in India. And there is 5G VEPP initiative. VEPP stands for Vertical Engagement and Partnership Program. This is an initiative of Department of Telecommunication for collaboration between users and 5G stakeholders. There are two issues regarding frequency band of 5G. You should know, certain bands are given names like S-band, L-band, C-band, E-band, etc. This C-band represents 4 GHz to 8 GHz range. This frequency range is used by aircraft radio altimeter. It continuously measures distance between aircraft's altitude and terrain below it. Its frequency range is 4 to 8 GHz. As we saw already, our 5G also uses some of these frequencies. 1 GHz to 6 GHz mid-frequency band coincides with this C band. So, Director General of Civil Aviation raised concerns regarding this possible interference. We also saw our high band of 5G uses 24 to 50 GHz as of now. But it can also be extended till 100 GHz once technology of 5G catches up. The E-band frequency represents 60 GHz to 90 GHz. This band has been given exclusively to 5G operators. Wi-Fi and broadband companies are opposing this being given to cellular companies exclusively. There is also news regarding private captive 5G networks. Private captive 5G towers are installed by private companies and provide service only to their employees. For example, Infosys setting up a 5G tower inside its campus only for their workers. This has been allowed by union cabinet, but telecom companies are opposing this as it eats away their profits. It's time to learn two more terminologies. First one is network slicing. Let's learn this through an example. There's a 5G tower in a town with 100 Mbps total capacity. For hospitals performing telesurgery, the tower allots 70 Mbps of this total 100 Mbps capacity. For people doing live stream, video conferencing, etc., it allots 20 Mbps. For people using just WhatsApp, Snapchat, etc., 10 Mbps is allotted. 5G technology makes this rational allocation possible. This is called network slicing. Second term is fiberization. There are many towers in the country. Connecting these towers through underground optical fibers is called fiberization. India has only 33% of its towers connected like this. US, Japan and China have 80-90% to fiberized. This makes communication backbone stronger. There is one last concept in 5G that is in news. 5G Open Radio Access Network. In short, Open RAN. To understand this, we have to understand how current mobile communication works. There are two parts, radio access network and core network. RAN is the visible part. It links your mobile phones and towers. It includes tower antenna and a base station just below the tower. When you log into Netflix in your phone, it sends a signal to tower. Base station digitizes and transmits this signal. These all are RAN network. 
the digitized signal from here is sent to core network that authenticates whether you have Netflix subscription, mobile data availability, etc. At present, network operators such as Airtel, Jio and all have a problem. If they purchase core network systems from Nokia, they have to purchase all tower, antenna, base station, hardware and software of RAN from Nokia only. This increases cost and limits choice and decreases efficiency. So, Open RAN intends to fix this. It allows for you to purchase hardware from different companies for RAN network. Antenna from Ericsson, base station from Nokia, software from Infosys, etc. 5G Open RAN increases this interoperability from different vendors. It increases efficiency and options and decreases cost. So what's the current affairs about this Open RAN? Center for Development of Telematics, CDOT, Wising Networks Private Limited and VVDN Technologies Private Limited. These three have signed an agreement for developing 5G Open RAN and products together. In this context, you must have heard standalone 5G and non-standalone 5G, SA5G and NSA5G. You already studied RAN part and core part of network. If you upgrade both RAN part and core part to new 5G architecture, it's standalone 5G. It is very fast and highly reliable. But it is very costly to upgrade like this. In non-standalone 5G, you upgrade only RAN part to new 5G machines and keep core part as old 4G architecture only. Speed is a little less, but it's not that costly to upgrade. This is the model followed in most part of the world due to lower cost of installation. Okay, there is one last current affairs related to 5G. It's very short. You saw the auctions were taking place in August 2022, but our startups and industry players needed some practice, right? So, in May 2022, Prime Minister inaugurated the country's first 5G testbed. Testbeds are just like your mock tests. Industry players and product manufacturers can test their 5G products. We inaugurated this testbed in our own country so that our industry players do not have to go outside. Testbeds were set up at 5 locations in India. It was a collaborative project of 8 institutes led by IIT Madras. That concludes 5G related current affairs.